Let's do this. <clears throat> you hear me? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the, the careers you did not know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and we are at the historic Viking Hotel in downtown Newport. And uh, with us, we have a special guest, Mr. Christopher Bates of uh, Ferguson Waterworks. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good morning, Dave. I'm well. How are you? All right. How was your night last night? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful event of, uh, of sharing, of, uh, of camaraderie, of, of awards being given out. It, it was great. It was a really nice night. It's, it's good to have people back together again. Oh, it's the best. You know, we're in, in the ballroom here and uh, so forth, and people are having breakfast and so forth. So this is a little background noise. But so tell us, uh, how did you get into the, uh, the water business? Wow. It's an interesting journey. I, I uh, started my career with the company, family-owned company that my mother was the uh, controller for. Okay. She uh, ran that company for 10 years, got me a job working there at the lowest level. Uh-huh. Um, at one point, you know, she passed away when I was 19. Uh-huh. I stayed on with the company, um, drove a truck, hey. got into inside sales, there you go. got into estimating, yep. sales management by the time I was 29, uh, the road in sales, and I managed sales there for the last... 12 years out of 26 years I was there. Nice, nice. So that, uh, now, uh, when you got out of high school, what, what was your path forward? Or did you have a path? Didn't have a path. Okay. Didn't really have a path because I, uh, my family, my family broke up when I was young and my mother and I were pretty much together alone. Yeah, yeah. She got sick while I was in high school, so uh-huh. my thoughts of going to college really couldn't percolate because okay. of financial reasons she was ill. Sure. So it was, it was really survival mm-hmm. and, uh, I gravitated into the industry just out of needing a job and wanting a job, uh-huh. and over time, I found myself with an affinity of being good at it. Okay. And and I was actually, as a truck driver, answering questions for my outside sales reps. They would ask me technical questions uh-huh. about the parts and pieces that they were selling. Sure. Yeah. So it kind of sort of got my head going in that direction from a sales perspective. Nice. Nice. That's great. Well, you know, as you know, the, the, the whole purpose of uh, me starting this podcast is to start to... Uh, expose younger students uh, to, to uh, a wide variety of careers that uh, the, the water industry as, as a whole is a kind of a huge umbrella uh, and a lot of great jobs and a lot of secure jobs and jobs is like you say uh, you know you don't necessarily need a college education you know, to start with so I agree 100 percent and that's that I think is the key and you mentioned it yesterday with the, the term the gray tsunami which I've used in some of my presentations yep. I've, I've had that said to me and it's Nobody, I don't know who coined it. Yeah. It's a great term. Yeah. And oh, no, it and is. And it's a very apt term because things are, we could see it happening dynamically. Even the, the few years that I've been in charge of my, of my the associates committee, I mean, yeah. we've had a lot of uh-huh. really great professional people just retire sure. and, it's, and sure. looking to backfill that and, and, and add to that. So it's, it's critical we get younger people involved. Sure. I know you're actively involved on the, on the, uh, the associates committee. So um, tell us your path to the Connecticut section. Well, the path to the Connecticut succession, it's an interesting path. Working for a private company for the longest time that I did, I sold a lot of, I was involved in the waterworks industry. But yeah. they were very, and still are very um, guarded with yeah. their time. Yeah. They didn't exactly want a lot of external involvement like that. When I left that company on my own volition, I took a year off. I got hired by Ferguson, and Ferguson's a much different company. Ferguson yes. wants you involved. They sure. want, they are obviously a national company with national presence. And uh, over the course of time, I uh, ended up on the, on the committee by virtue of, of someone leaving the company. Yep. Um, and then I took his place. And actually what happened was, during a meeting, I left to go answer an email, came back to the meeting, and found out I was vice chair. I went, oh, that's great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you you know, got, all right. You got voluntold. I got, I got voluntold. And then, of course, later on I went, oh, that's what that means. Okay. So it, it was kind of sort of... Uh, it was a natural bleeding of, of into the industry, into right. this part of ac- the activity of the, the sections. You know, uh, you know, the section, I think, you know, I've been in it for many, many years. And, yes. uh, it, it's a phenomenal organization. And, and you're a Fuller w- winner, aren't you? I, I am. That's, I am. Yeah, I that's pretty cool. To, yeah. I think 2017. Yeah, yeah congrats on that. Water, but yeah. I, you know, it was one of those uh, honors that was bestowed on me. Uh, it was totally unexpected. But, you know, I had been, been involved in section for many many years as you know you you see me around all of the yeah. uh, the uh, 
the, the conferences with my camera. I'm the, 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 the photographer. I guess is the default photographer. You're, the, you're saving everybody's bacon with the technology issues. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, so. well, that too. You know, <laughs> to go from there. But you know, the the the, the waterworks community is is a close knit community, um, and it's a very passionate community. You know, as far as uh, uh, people enjoy what they do, and uh, you know, one of the things I'm you know, promoting to a lot of the younger students that are either in high school or just starting their way into college is that, uh, you know, keep your mind open uh, to, you know, careers within this industry. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, a treatment plant operator or, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, those, those uh, positions are there. No, and I agree with that, and it's something we've talked about in my committee. Um, we've go, tried to go down that path, and I think creating it, there has to be a way we can create a, a natural um, program, a simple and effective way to talk to these kids, mm -hmm. it, it, whether it's in their auditoriums or however we sure. do it, to let them know that, hey, here's my path. And guess what? I didn't go to college. Couldn't, whether you can't or didn't want to, yeah. or, or you're, it's not up for you. It doesn't mean you don't have a brain. It doesn't mean you can't think. It doesn't mean you're not technically proficient. Exactly. There are so many opportunities in this great industry, and they've got to see that, I think, from a, from a real trench, I call it trench warfare, from a base level. Yeah, grass, grassroots. Grassroots, yeah. yeah. You know, I think that's the whole premise of, you know, creating the podcast is in, in doing interviews like this with people that are in the industry that have found their way in the industry through a variety of avenues uh, and so forth. And, uh, I, again, stressing to the point, you know, not everybody's made to go to college or can't go college but you know um you know there are uh positions industries uh is that are are valued under that umbrella you've got customer service you've got media readers, you've got construction you've got equipment operators uh you've got hr you've got accountants you name it and it's there and you know these these positions uh if you don't have a college degree of course you have your engineers and you know that type of stuff but uh you know there's there's ways to get into the industry and, and work your way up yeah, 100%. And I think the industry has to be very, very open to that. Um, and was it, I forget who said it yesterday, yesterday's session, with respect to getting, reaching out to, to younger people mm -hmm. and not really getting, they cleaned, I think it was Connecticut Water. They yep. cleaned up their yep. their um, job applications, kind, yep. of, kind of made it much broader in the sense of, of their descriptions yep, yep. to get more people in. Exactly. So it's not so doesn't look on paper so confining and defining. Right, you know, right. It's, it can be very open-minded. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If you don't check all of the boxes, it doesn't, you know, make, you know the bottom line is getting people in the door. I, I, I agree 100%. So it's you got to look outside the box. you be, be got to look at their capabilities mm -hmm. and what they can and cannot do. Sure, sure. As opposed to what they what some piece of paper says they can and cannot do. So, so tell me, what, what's your day job right now? At Ferguson, I, I, I'm an account manager, outside sales rep. So, okay. so what I do, I'm deeply involved in public work projects with water companies, private projects, supplying water, sewer, drainage materials. But all of that is a continuous flow of activity with respect to the project, projects that go to bid, doing yep. takeoffs, putting yep. together proposals, yep. and, and, and making sure that the proposals line up with the specifications. As you know, they're all different from every oh, town. Oh, absolutely. You know, different yeah. direction valve, you got different this, you know. Sure, yeah. And, and on top of that, making sure the jobs get serviced, do a lot of mentoring with the younger associates in the company because there are a lot of younger people that don't know what they need to know. Sure. So our, you know, what I say to them, you know, our best value to our clients is to know our industry well. Right, right, right. Know it well, be wonderful with specifications, and be on top of everything. So, um, I know you're, you're uh, deeply involved in the Associates Committee, so uh, tell us a little bit about how the, uh, the Associates Committee uh, contributes to the section. Wow, it's, uh, you know, it's a great group of people, you know, I, to, to say that, that I'm blessed to have some really solid, wonderful contributors is is probably uh, an understatement. Yeah, yeah. Um, the way we contribute, we, we between the scholarships, the enhancer program, I, I, think, I think the best way, to, we're like the backbone that helps keep everything moving forward with a lot of activities between the fall conference, between Act Cave, the Hydrant Hysteria competition, this, this event here, the conference. Sure. You know, we're, we're behind the scenes raising money, yeah. giving, giving money to the YPs, giving exactly. money to other, other sections, other sure. parts of the section to, yes. to let them. And we do that through our enhancer program, yes. which is which is our, which I 
we don't have that behind us here. It'd be great to have those things behind it, but all, all the companies that contribute sure, to sure, that, sure. you know. Well, I remember, uh, you know, for many years that uh, we used to give the scholarships out at the state capitol. Yes, I yes. I remember, I remember filming quite a few. Oh, yes, yeah, I did uh, a few of those. As far as that goes, but it's, it's, uh, it's a means of, again, uh, spreading that wealth and, and introducing people, um, you know, to the industry uh, as a career path. And, uh, and again, uh, not, not everybody's made to go to college, but, you know, uh, you know there, there are a lot of uh, kids that are looking to, to enhance their education, you know, be it engineering, be it, uh, you know, uh, environmental, environmentalists being in, the, in this industry, as you know, oh, yes. uh, as far as that goes. So uh, go from there. So uh, what words of wisdom would you have for, uh, you know, a high school senior or college freshman? Oh, wow. Words. I mean, a lot of words. I think. I think. <laughs> I, I think. I think to, to be open-minded. You know, when l- look down the street, right? Let's say, uh, use your brain, be logical, and be yep. a critical thinker. Yep. Because that guy down the street who's a carpenter, who's got the nice house, he's got a boat, runs his own company, probably didn't go to college. Yep. He's doing okay. Absolutely. And that's a great path too. Sure. You have to be open-minded. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think everybody's so college focused yeah. that it's it, 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 it it's becomes myopic. Yes, yes. Because very myopic, and yeah. and you're not like in our job. I see it right now, so we don't get killed by the gray tsunami. Yeah. Is to is to open their eyes, open that or bald tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too, um, and open their eyes though, and, and do it in a way that makes sense. That's not so complicated that they can't grasp it. Well, that's the thing, you know, kids today, um, and I, I don't want to say they're indoctrinated, but a lot of times they're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of pushed in a direction in, a, in high school guidance office that, well, you should get a higher education and, and so forth. And uh, like we said, a lot of everybody's not made to go to college, and a lot of these kids that do go to college and so forth, um, you know, get out of college and they're, they're, they're $60,000, $70,000 in debt with student loans. No job. And, and no job. And no job, and uh, so forth. So this is a career that uh, is boots on the ground. You can get in at any entry level. Okay, you can move laterally, you can move vertically. Uh, There's so many different avenues uh, to be involved in the industry, and it's a great group of people. Oh, it's a phenomenal group of people. And at the end of the day, Dave, it's the single most important resource we have. You cannot do a thing without water. No, you can live a week without food. You can't live a week without water. Exactly. You can build all the things you want and have all the WalMarts and doctors, but without water, no bueno. It's that's, no good. That's it. No tiki, no laundry. You that's know, right. Go from there. That's, that's right. So, hey, on a, on a personal level, what do you do for fun? Oh, I love to play golf. Hey, there yeah. you go. Yeah, golf is a big passion of mine. My kids are older now, so it's there. One's 28. He lives in Raleigh, Durham. You know, uh-huh. My daughter goes to college and, and right here in Rhode Island up at okay. uh, Bryant. Okay. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, I work a lot. I take care of my house, you know, standard chores. I like, uh, but I also uh, I'm in the middle of a rehab project in a car. Okay, that nice. I've been what kind of car? It's a 1968 uh, AMC Javelin. Nice. A- That's SS- a classic. SST 390. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I back in the day, I had a, an, an AMC Pacer. <laughs> my brother had one of those. Ruined the day he lost it. His wife rolled it. Legitimate, legitimate story. She was getting on the highway on 691 in Cheshire, and I don't know what the hell she did. Yeah, she yeah. rolled it. Yeah, didn't get hurt. Yeah, because you know how around oh, that thing. Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. You know, it was a, but he he loved that thing. It was a, it was a six cylinder, three speed. He loved it. Right, <laughs> loved right. that car. Well, he still talks about it. Yeah, well, it's 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 classic. You know the cars. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm from I'm from Portland, and you know one of Portland's claim ah. to fame is obviously is is Wayne Green. Wayne, yeah. and, uh, Chasing classic cars, and yeah. so we always go down. In fact, I've done many interviews with Wayne oh, have you? on doing uh, economic development and promotional videos for the town of Portland. And I also have a, a TV show uh, for the town, which is called Portland on the Move. And, and, and Wayne has been on quite a few times, but you know he's always good for uh, you know uh, our, our our listens and watches are up over fifteen, eighteen thousand. You know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. He's, he's he does some wild stuff. Yeah, he does. And classic cars is. Uh, Hey, the, the cars that he restores and the cars that he owns uh, are very eclectic, and I think his uh, his collection probably is only second to Jay Leno's. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's 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 good friends with Jay. Jay oh, I imagine they they got yeah, to yeah, yeah. Jay Jay visits Portland quite a bit. You know, 
and so forth, and vice versa. So anyway, um, anyway, uh, as you know, I'm into music. So, um, what's your what's your favorite album? Wow, man, <laughs> that's a tough one. It's <sighs> got you thinking. <laughs> oh no, I can go down that road. Like for I, I'm a big into music. Still, I big into vinyl. Still yeah, play hey, vinyl. Hey, vinyl is coming back, man. Vinyl is the best. Yeah. Oh hell. You can't. Oh my god. It's, it's so warm. It's, oh, just it's it, it, uh, favorite album. If I had to take it to an island, if I had to take an app, oh my god, that's hard. I'm a big Rush fan. Twenty one twelve. Yeah, Bert, can't 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 go anywhere without that. Yeah. I mean, that's just cool. awesome. Awesome. It's uh, what about you? Uh, I'm 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 kind of a jam band guy. Okay. You know, uh, all my brothers uh, uh, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but I also, uh, you know, I, I I like a lot of jazz. Okay. Uh, you know, my, my degrees in music, but uh, you know, I've done a lot of a lot of playing, a lot of gigging. Uh, what do you many, play? Many weddings. What do you play? Uh, guitar. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so forth. So. Uh, you know. I've tried jazz on occasion when you're on the road. You, you, you yeah. switch radio stations and try to you know do oh, some yeah. things. And I've run into some jazz, probably more modern stuff. That I'm like, eh, this is not bad. Some of the older stuff, it, I can't get it yeah. rhythmically. It's a little difficult. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, but a year, years ago, back in the '80s, I used to do uh, back all the shows in the Catskills. So uh, you know, uh, you, you got to you know develop your reading shops, and you know you got to play a lot of music. Uh, so which, which is good. So. Cool. All cool. right. Uh, next question. Uh, Desert Island food. Pepperoni pizza. Hey. <laughs> Meets all the food groups. <laughs> Meets all the food groups. It can, it can, it can, if it's not too hot, it can actually leave it out. It'll survive a couple of days and up in the refrigerator. Sure, absolutely. Last a long time. You can ration it. Yeah, yeah. And if you have to feed it to the animals to keep them at bay, you can do that too. It's just, do that too? It's, very, very, it's got a lot of, <laughs> lot of options there. <laughs> nice, nice. So um, <laughs> go, going forward, um, you know, as far as... Uh, uh, keeping these, uh, you know, is, is retirement on the on the horizon for you, or is uh, not probably if not for a few years? Yeah, it's a few years. I mean, it really depends. You know, I'm going to be 58 this year. Uh -huh. I've been in this a long time, but I, I have still a playful, youthful mind. Oh, absolutely. And and that's that's the key to the thing. Yeah, you know, it, is, yeah. it really comes down to you know time, effort, and and finances, and and where the whole thing goes. Yeah, exactly. you know. Exactly. What it, if I ever retired? Would I? That's like it's funny you're saying that because I'm working with a, an engineer on a project and a couple different projects, and he's got one of these stickers. You know, it tells him he's going to be retiring yeah, at the yeah. end of the year. Oh, okay. His name is Art. So every once in a while we talk, Art. You know, oh yeah, it's 115 days or whatever. I go, Art, are you worried about not having anything to do? Like getting bored? He goes, Chris, I have plenty of activities. I'm ready. <laughs> so I'm the same way. I mean, I have plenty of hobbies and things. I'm not worried about any of that it all comes down to finances and time and where you like yeah exactly you. well i've been with the town of portland uh you're 48 and a half so wow uh it's one of those things but you know i've got kind of the best of both worlds like uh, i own a music store so you know when i since I, I'm, I'm looking possibly you know uh getting to the golden 50 and saying see you later and yeah. so forth but you know to go from there but i love what i do yeah, I can tell. You know, I can tell. This is passionate, and you know, doing this podcast is uh, this is great. I didn't know you did this. This yeah. is wonderful. I, I started this. Uh, I think this is probably uh, episode eighteen or nineteen, uh, and so forth. I've been really been doing them every week. I, uh, uh, yesterday, I interviewed uh, uh, Melissa, who's the past president yep. for, for AWWA, and uh, you know, it just you know, we're, we're looking at taking this on a, on a more national level, getting it into. I think it's great. I really do. And I appreciate you having me on because um, you need to be able to share this again with the youth. The, you know, when you're young in this industry, when I was young and I got into it and I, I became a sales manager by default. My, I was an assistant sales manager for a couple of years. My boss leaves. The owner of the company goes, hey, I need you to take this job. I'm like, huh? Okay, so here I'm 29 years old, I'm a sales manager, and now I'm going to certain events like this, and you're a young person. Sure. And a lot of the older people, some, not all, were you look down on a kid. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, I was a kid. Just know that I was a kid, but you know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. But there were a handful that, that went, well, oh, okay, we'll, we'll help him. And yeah. that was good. So we've got to be like that. Yes. We've got to be like that. Because Absolutely. I never want, I, you know, there are. 
it was it was torture in certain certain aspects. Oh yeah, oh, you yeah. know. So well, anyway, this way. But I appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, it's a great conference. It's a uh, great conference. It's great to have everybody back in person. Oh, uh, it's great. Oh, my God, is that year and a half of. Of, of Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings. Oh. It was just like, oh, my God. Torture. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, hey, it, it proved that we could, we could survive. Yeah. Uh, we got, you know, we got through it. We got through it. And just... uh, we're on the downside. So, anyway. Yes, All righty. Fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that wraps up this episode for careers you didn't know about and the uh, the state of the water and wastewater industry and again uh, thank you very much to Mr. Chris Bates from the Ferguson Company. Chris, thank thanks so much for coming on. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the conference and uh, we'll uh, let you know when we get this uh, posted and up. Right. So, Appreciate that. Thank thanks you. so much. Yep. Okay. Take care.